many of you have heard someone say, you spend more time at work than you do at home? Okay, yeah, good number of you. Uh, now, the assumption is that they're not talking about the time that you spend sleeping. And this comment could have been said as a, a fun fact, but more often it's said with an Eeyore-like tone. You spend half your life at work, so you might as well enjoy it. <laughs> and, and this tone probably had you feeling like Eeyore. Now, after hearing this a number of times, I thought, how is this possible? How could this be true? And since playing with numbers is something that I've always been interested in, I did some calculations. And I found that, except for some very rare work situations, these soul-crushing statements just weren't true. Now, for those of you who absolutely love their job, you might be thinking, you know, uh, what's the big deal? Uh, you know, I look forward to work every single day. Work is something that, uh, that I enjoy, and I'm happy for you. Then there are those folks who see work as simply a means to survive, a way to put food on their table, have a roof over their head. These people dread Mondays and are counting down the days to retirement. And there must be a lot of people that feel this way, because when's the last time you heard of a lottery going bankrupt? So um, these people have found my results quite valuable. Now, when uh, I was building the calculator that you see here, my goal was to determine the amount of hours or time that a person spends at work versus not at work. I factored in things like national holidays, the amount of time a person sleeps, vacation time, um, uh, sick time, the amount of hours that a person works per day, and the number of days that a person works in a week. You'll notice under the, the heading hours at work per day, it also includes the amount of time that you prepare for work and the amount of time that you travel to and from work. So let's put this calculator to the test. I'm gonna give you some of my uh, personal numbers and we'll see what kind of results we get. So in terms of the hours of sleep that I get per night, on average it's six. The hours at work that I spend, including the travel time and preparing, it's nine and a half. And I do that five days a week. Then when I think about vacation leave, I take four weeks per year. And for times where I'm sick or I'm taking care of others in my family who are sick, that's uh, three days a year. So looking at my results, I spend 25% of my year sleeping. And I also spend 25% of my year working, which then uh, has 50% of my year not working and not sleeping. You'll notice uh, another box there titled awake hours per year. When I first showed the calculator to people, they would say, you know, Mike, uh, the hours that I sleep, you shouldn't include that in there. So that's what this box does. It takes sleep out of the equation and just focuses on those hours where I'm awake. And based on what I see here, during the hours that I'm awake, I'm at work a third of the time and not at work two thirds of the time. So I'd like to do another test of the calculator. So um, I need a volunteer and the only criteria is that you have a job. So if you could <laughs> you raise your hands, some volunteer, some numbers. Uh, I just wanna ask you a few questions. In terms of the number of hours that you sleep per night, on average, what would you say? Uh, I would say seven to eight. Se seven to, should we say seven and a half? Sure. Okay, so seven and a half. When you think about your work day, including the amount of time that you travel to and from work, uh, and the amount of time you prepare for work, how many hours would that be? I would say 10. 10, excellent. And how many days do you, uh, a week do you work like that? Five at 10 hours. <laughs> okay, five at 10 hours, okay. Um, and looking at vacation weeks per year, how, how many would you take? Uh, four. four. So four weeks annually. And then thinking about the times where you're not feeling well or you're taking care of family members who are not feeling well, how many days per year would that be? I'm saying two. Two. Yeah. Okay. So let's take a look at your results. Uh, based on what you've said, uh, for 31% of the year, you are sleeping. For 26% of the year, you are working. And for 42% of the year, you're not working or sleeping. Looking at the hours that you're awake, 38% of the time you're at work, and 62% of the time you're not at work. So looking at these, these results, um, uh, what's your first thought that comes to mind? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> wow, yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah. And I get a lot of that when I show the uh, people this calculator. Wow, I never knew. You know, uh, interesting. Uh, and you know, looking at these stats here, based on what I'm seeing, over the course of a year, you'd be able to do all of your work 
and you would be able to watch the entire Game of Thrones series 50 times. <laughs> Not that you would want to, but anyway, you might, I don't know, 50 times. So now we're gonna shift gears and we're gonna look at people who are known as burning the candle at both ends. Uh, this category might include shift workers, taxi drivers, entrepreneurs, small business owners, uh, doctors, and the like. These people are known for working long hours and not getting a lot of sleep. Now, the data that you see there came from multiple online studies. So for sleep, we have five hours a night. For uh, working, they work 12-hour days, six days a week. For vacation, they take two weeks annually, and for time off for sick leave or family-related, it's two days per year. So these folks end up sleeping 21% of their year, they work 39% of their year, and they're not working or not sleeping 40% of their year. So even if you work 12-hour days, six days a week, you're at home more often than you're at work. Now, this calculator doesn't only apply to Canadians, so let's take a look at how Canada compares to other countries. Have you ever been on holiday and thought, man, I would love to live like they do here, with their leisure time, their laid-back pace of life? Well, it turns out that you probably do. Um, based on data from the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, Canadians work in the same range of hours as people from many other parts of the world. So let's see what happens when I put data in from various countries. Before I get to that, I, I just want to highlight uh, underneath the sleeping percentage column, you notice that it says all 27s uh, along the, the column there. Um, and that's because I used the research norm of six and a half hours of sleep per night, for, and I applied that to every, every country. So when I input data from Italy and Spain, it turns out that Canadians work the same amount of time as people from Italy and Spain, 29% of the year. When I put in information from Mexico and Costa Rica, it turns out, surprisingly, maybe, that uh, Canadians work 5% less than people from Mexico and Costa Rica. 5% less, who knew? Right. All right, so now I wanna shift back to an individual focus. Um, when I first built the calculator, I was looking at results over the course of a year, and that got me curious about what it would look like over the course of a lifetime. So we're gonna take a look at that calculation. For this calculation, I used sleep of six and a half hours a night, 11 hour work days, five days a week. For vacation, I used three weeks annually and two days off per year for taking care of loved ones who are sick or if you're not feeling well yourself. Then for the life expectancy, I was gonna use 75. And when I mentioned this to my aunt, who is 76, uh, she said, you know, Mike, you, you might wanna bump that up to 80. Um, and she wasn't that far off. Uh, based on the research, um, it turns out that it's 79. So that's what I've used for my calculations here. So let's see what, uh, what the findings are. If you live to 79 and you work for 25 years, it's only 9% of your life spent working. You will have slept 27% of your life, which would leave you 64% of your life to do other things. If you work for 30 years, it's only 11% of your life focused on work. 35 years, 13% spent working. Even if you labor for 50 years out of your 79, it ends up being only 19% of your life working. And with 27% sleeping, that would give you over half of your remaining life to focus on other things, 54%. Seriously, we do not spend a lot of our life working. So what do we do with this knowledge? Well, I'm gonna leave that up to you. Each of you can decide what part of your life you'd like to focus on. And the next time you hear somebody say, you spend more time at work than you do at home, my hope is that you'll share this information and help that person feel less like Eeyore and more like Tigger. Thank you.